Hi kids. Okay, today we're gonna do lesson 10, uh, Eureka Math, and it's still module one, lesson 10, subtracting decimals. So yesterday we did lesson nine, and the objective is still the same, but we're doing subtraction with decimals using place value strategies and relating those to a written method. Yes, this is yesterday's paper, so we used the place value chart. And then also found a boo-boo, find a lot of these, well, not too many, but uh, fixed it from yesterday, the notes. Remember, we did this in class. Uh, that wasn't five in the ones, it was five in the tenths, and so we made it correct. Now, for today's lesson, we're gonna be using the place value chart again, using unit form again to help us rename and look at the value of all the digits so that we can subtract. And we're gonna use this place value chart. I'm gonna move it up so that you guys can just make sure, double check, that you have all of the notes from class before we jump into the book. You can pause the video if you need to. Okay, so when you're finished taking your notes, we're in lesson 10, and um, we're gonna be subtracting, writing the difference, that's the answer to the subtraction problem in standard form, but we're also still working with unit form. Okay, and you can keep your place value chart handy. Um, we will have worked with the place value blocks again, so um, hopefully you'll, you'll be ready to jump in. Anyway, when we're talking about the same form, so it's 5 tenths minus 2 tenths, it's just simple subtraction, and we get 3 tenths. And this is going to look like 0 0.3, or 3 tenths in standard form. So moving on, 5 ones, 9 thousandths. And all the time, like I am going to tell you that when you see something in unit form, we will be preparing to work with the standard algorithm, and it really, really helps if you write uh, the standard form. So five ones, nine thousandths. Okay, you're gonna wanna set that up so you can do your subtraction. Minus two ones, look at that. Now this is what throws people off because they'll be like, oh, I'm gonna put the two over here. No, this is thousandths. Only subtract from the column where, that they're telling you, okay? Two ones, five ones. Take the two ones from the five ones, do not touch the nine thousandths. So watching out for those equals again because that could throw you off. Students will say, well, I wanna put the answer right here. And I would say, don't do it. So equals how many ones and how many thousandths. There are uh, five ones and nine thousandths. And then you subtract and you get three. Oops, I'm gonna write the answer on the line. How about that? Three ones and nine thousandths. And that's our answer because we're gonna solve for it but we have to break it up in uniform before standard form. Hopefully that is clearer than mud. C, seven hundreds, eight hundredths. Watch out, okay? This is whole number, this is a decimal fraction. Minus four hundredths. And again, we're just taking the hundredths away from the hundredths and you don't mess with the hundreds. So you're gonna end up with seven hundredths still and then this is gonna be your four hundredths, which is going to look like 700, four hundredths. Then we have 37 thousandths minus 16 thousandths, and really it's the same form, so we're just gonna be taking this away, just like that. You end up with 21 thousandths. Don't forget, I have to have my last digit in this place, the thousandths place, it needs to end up right there. So if you wanna put your lines and fill in the blanks, that can really help you. Now moving on to the standard algorithm. Again, keep a place value chart handy. Use your counting uh, dots or spots or units or whatever you wanna call them. I just put dots, it's easy, easy to subtract from. Slash them out. Uh, if needed, so that you can see the concept of what's happening. But here we're using the standard algorithm. So only use your place value chart if you must. 
And so when you only have four in the tenths place and you have to take seven, that's when you have to go to the larger position and then take one of these away and make it 10 of these and then you add it to what was there. So if I take one that has 10 times the value, give it to this column, then I will have 14 tenths so that I can take away the seven. And that will give me bum, 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 decimal down, seven tenths, okay? So set these all up using the standard algorithm, 91.49 minus 0 0.7. Watch out. Look at how I lined these up. You have to be very, very careful. Do not put anything in the hundredths column. There's nothing there. Make sure your seven is under the four. Line up by the decimals. I could even put decimal down right now because it's going to go there. Then you can start your subtraction if you have enough on the top to pull from. Now I do. I don't have anything here. I could put a zero. Nine minus zero, nine. Four minus seven, oh, I don't have enough. I gotta go here just like we did before. Take one, give 10. Now I have 14 minus seven for seven. You can take out this line if it's confusing. Okay, just helping you line things up. And then I have zero minus zero is zero in the ones, nine tens minus nothing. So write that up top. Okay, line up carefully. 191.49 minus 10 and 72 hundredths. It's all about lining them up. Nine minus two, seven. No regrouping. 4 minus 7, again, yes, they're doing it on purpose. Uh, get used to it. Go over here, take 1 away. 1 minus 1 is 0. Give this one 10. So you just put a little 1 in front of the digit that was there. I'm using 14 minus 7. I get 7 again. 0 minus 0. 9 minus 1 this time. And then 1 minus nothing. And that gives us our 180 and 77 hundredths. So this is all the same, but watch out. Watch out, look at two digits to the left, one digit to the left, one and then zero, but three digits first and two digits that come after that. It's all about lining it up. Just put the decimals in first, would you? It will really help you out. 7.148 minus 0.07. Set it up like that. 60.91 minus 2.856. Set it up like that. 361 and 31 hundredths minus 2 in the ones place. 841. If you line these up like this, then the only thing that's left is the subtraction. Now I'm gonna skip this one. I'm sure you guys can handle it on your own. Same type of borrowing and regrouping. What do I do here when I don't have a, a number to pull from? I have nothing here. That's okay. I'm just gonna go right next door. Take one, give 10. I had nothing, now I have 10. It's easy peasy. 10 minus six, four. Now I have nothing again. Wah, wah. Go next door. That's okay. Take one, give 10. Borrowing is so easy. You just go, get one, give 10. 10 minus five, five. Eight minus eight, zero. Zero minus two, no problem. Go next door, take one, give 10. Now I have 10 there. Wee, 10 minus two, eight. Five minus nothing, five. And we end up with 58 and 54 thousandths for our answer. Okay, finally, this is the same approach if I have nothing to pull from. You can't just switch the order, okay? This is what we started with, and we're pulling this much from it. You cannot flip. It's very important, okay? So we'll talk about properties very soon. Um, 
in class. So put the zero there. Go next door. Take one, give 10. 10 minus one, nine. Oh, I have nothing left. That's okay. Take one, give 10. 10 minus four, six. Two minus eight, can't do it. That's okay. Go next door. Take one, give 10. 12 minus eight, four. I have nothing here. That's okay. Go next door. Take one, give 10. 10 minus two, eight. Then the five comes down and the three comes down because there is nothing to subtract from them. And so your final answer is 358 and 469,000. It's a lot of digits, but trust yourself, you can do it. Now, on the back, I'm just gonna set them up for you so that you can solve the subtraction. But you have some additional directions. First, write in standard form. Then subtract. Okay? So you need to make sure that you are um, taking these units and giving them place value first. Because 10 tens is not 10. 10 tens is 100. And you may need to do some figuring on the side. You may need to come over here and say, oh, well, it's 10 tens. Okay, so whatever you need to do to solve it, but write in standard form. Now, if I have 110 and then I have 110th, I'm going to end up with a 10 and 110th. This decimal is here. Set up your subtraction, and when you have this again, just put a zero there and we will pull. From it. Now, what if there is nothing to pull out? Oh, there's nobody home. Nobody home. That's okay. We're going to take one and give 10. Now, when working with zeros, we'll talk about what happens all the way across. And so now I have 10 here. Well, that doesn't help me down here. Well, I'll just go back and try to get it again. This becomes a 9. Now we drop off. So take one, give 10. Ah, it still doesn't help me here. Take one give 10. So when you go over zeros, this is going to happen every now and then, you go to the end, get what you need, drop your nines in the middle, and a 10 on the end. But you'll figure that out in time. For now, just go one column at a time, take one, give 10, take one, give 10, take one, give 10, and you'll get there. So 10 minus 1 is 9, 9 minus 0 is 9, 9 minus 1, 8, and that's what I should end up with, with nothing over here. Um, and then you don't have a line to fill in, so circle your answer, 89 and 9 tenths. Now here I have three. It's just a plain old three. Three ones. 22 tenths. 22 tenths. I need to finish here. That's going to give me this number, 3 minus 22 tenths. So this is how you'll set it up. This one is 37 tenths, and like we did here, it's going to be 37 tenths minus 1, 1, 2 tenths, 1, 1, 2 tenths. So set that up and solve. 8 ones, 9 hundredths for your first number, 8 ones, no tenths, nine hundredths minus three and four tenths. So just like it says, three in the ones place, four in the tenths place, set it up for subtraction. I have plenty to pull from. I can put a zero here and solve. Five and 622 thousandths minus three hundredths. One little digit in this place. Tenths, hundredths. It goes here in the hundredths place. That's the only place where I need to put a digit until I put the zero and the decimal. Now I can do all my subtraction. You can put a zero here if it makes you happy. 
and here as well. Two ones, four tenths. Two ones, four tenths. Minus 59 hundredths, it's already in standard form. So 0 0.59. On this one again, nothing to pull from. Don't flip it around, you can't do that. This is the hole that we're pulling from. Put a zero here, go next door, take one, give 10, and do your subtraction. Not enough, that's okay. Go next door, take one, give 10, do your subtraction. Decimal down, that's your final answer. So that one we'll do together. Finally, for the word problems, um, Mrs. Fan wrote five tenths minus three hundredths on the board. Michael said the answer is two tenths because five minus three is two. Well, five minus three is two, but are we talking about the same unit? Is he correct? And explain. So it looks like if we set this up, five tenths minus three hundredths, we will have a three that is not under the five. So he is not using the correct place value position column when he does his subtraction. If you do the actual subtraction, nothing here, go next door, take one, give 10, you end up with 47 decimal down hundredths. So no, he is incorrect. He is wrong. Poor Michael, he got something wrong. That's okay, everybody gets stuff wrong. He is wrong, and then you would explain uh, he did not line up the digits in the correct place value positions. Okay, and again, write it out. It's about place value positions. I'm just trying to go fast for the video. You take your time. A pen costs $2.09. It costs 45 cents less than a marker. Which one costs more? The marker. A pen costs $2.09. Pen. It costs this much less than a marker. It costs less than the marker. This is the marker. $2.09. This is all money. And this is. 45 cents. That's that little extra piece. Okay, so you have to really look at how they're using the words. Always be on your toes with these problems. If the pen costs this and it, the pen, is less than a marker, then make a tape diagram to show which one is more. Ken paid for one pen, 209, and one marker with a $5 bill. 209 and whatever this is. Well, you should add it up and find out. Okay? This is going to be the cost of the marker. Then you're going to take that and you'll put it together. Uh, let's just do it so I'll give you at least part of uh, the answer. 9 plus 5 is 14. Carry that over. 4 plus 1 is 5. And we have our 254 for the marker. Okay? Now he bought a pen and a marker. So now you have the pen and the marker that you have to figure out the cost for. When you find out the cost, you're going to take your $5 bill and you're going to subtract. And you will have the answer. But I know you guys can do it and we will check it in class. So great work and I will see you soon.